This video is about retinal problems caused by the vitreous humor. The vitreous humor is the jelly that fills the hollow space in the center of the eyeball. It has much the same consistency as egg white. It is dis distinct from aqueous humor, the watery fluid that occupies the front part of the eye. The description of invisible by design captures the idea that you don't really pay attention to the vitreous until it causes problems. For example, floaters, macular traction, and retinal tear slash detachment. This video is number two in our series about the vitreous, focusing on the problems it causes. In part one, we looked at the structure of the vitreous in detail. We will briefly review that. The vitreous jelly starts out life with a uniform consistency containing about 98% water. At the edge of the vitreous body, the gel is more condensed. This is called the vitreous cortex and it is attached to the inside surface of the retina. The fine structure of the vitreous is based on a matrix of long collagen fibers. Attachment of the vitreous cortex to the retina is a key feature. Attachment is strongest at the vitreous base in the front of the eye. Next strongest is around the optic nerve. There are significant attachments at and around the fovea, the area of in the center of the retina which serves fine detail vision, and over blood vessels, not shown here. These are the places where the vitreous causes problems by pulling on the retina. We will show you the effects of vitreous traction in a minute. With time, the uniform gel structure of the vitreous changes. First, pockets of gel begin to liquefy, progressively increasing in size. In, in itself, that is not particularly noticeable, but it is accompanied by clumping of the collagen fibers which creates cloudy spots that you see as floaters in your vision. In addition to liquefaction, another important change happens. The vitreous cortex becomes thinner and less strongly attached to the inner retina. At some point, the liquid part of the vitreous finds its way underneath the cortex, creating a space between the cortex and retina. The cortex, being more firmly attached to the fovea, the orange arrow, initially makes this tented appearance. Usually, the foveal attachment gives way and the cortex pulls free. As more fluid gets under the vitreous cortex, it separates further, maintaining the stronger attachment around the optic nerve. And finally, that attachment also gives way, leaving the vitreous body tethered only at its strongest attachment in the front of the eye. The ring where it was attached around the optic nerve often comes off creating a dense circular floater. This one most people notice and may find bothersome. That whole process is descriptively named posterior vitreous detachment. Most people go through this process ending up with a few new floaters, but no big issues. However, not everyone is that lucky. It is difficult to see the vitreous in action because it's clear. However, new technology in the form of an OCT scan uses light waves reflected off the retina to provide a detailed look at the fine structure of the retina and vitreous. To get you oriented, the fovea is the very center part of the retina responsible for your finest detail vision. This OCT scan shows a nice normal fovea. The arrow shows the full thickness of the retina. The red line below is the pigment layer beneath the retina. The vitreous is here. Note the smooth hill and valley contour of the retinal surface. This is the very center of your vision with your most detailed acuity. Now, you are ready to see and understand vitreous traction. Remember in the first stage in vitreous detachment, fluid worked its way in between the cortex and retina. Here is a closer view of that. Sometimes the attachment of the fovea is strong and does not want to let go. Forces in the vitreous pulling vertically on the fovea can elevate a part of the retina. If they pull hard enough, that can pull a hole in the central retina called a macular hole. It results in a small missing area right in the center of vision. Here is an OCT scan showing foveal elevation in real life. Note the normal hill and valley contour is gone. You can see the back edge of the vitreous 
is pulling up on the fovea. At the time of this scan, vision was only reduced to 2030. One of several things can happen from here. If left alone, the vitreous might release its grip. If it holds on and vision is reduced, then a surgery can be done to remove the vitreous attachment. Also, there is a new medication which could be injected into the eye to try and dissolve the vitreous attachment. Another problem can develop if, when the vitreous cortex pulls away, it leaves a remnant of cortex attached to the surface of the retina. That remnant may contain a kind of cells called hylocytes that can join together to form a sheet or a membrane. That is called an epiretinal membrane. A sheet or a membrane of those kind of cells tends to contract. Since it is attached to the surface of the retina, that causes the retina to wrinkle. That may sound odd, but here it is in real life. You can see to the right of the fovea there is a distinctly wrinkled area on the surface of the retina. Since it is not in the center of the fovea, it does not significantly affect vision. Here is a case with more dramatic central wrinkling. Vision is reduced to a little less than 2040. The remedy for this is surgery to remove the surface membrane. Here is an alternate situation where the cortex remnant is on one side of the fovea. When it contracts, it pulls on the fovea horizontally, and that's another way to create a macular hole. Here is an OCT scan of just such a hole. Note the foveal contour has steep walls and undermined edges. This is one of the few cases where you can see the problem by looking directly into the eye, here shown as the darker red area in the center of this photo. You get the picture. Vitreous pulling on the retina. So far we have listed examples of pulling occurring in the back of the eye. The front of the eye is not immune from the effects of vitreous traction. Here we are, back at our eyeball after the posterior vitreous detachment, with the mass of vitreous tethered only at the front of the eye. What do you think happens when the eye moves? As the eyeball rotates, the vitreous wants to remain stationary. So every time you move your eye, the vitreous is pulling on the retina. If the vitreous is strongly attached, and it pulls hard enough, the retina will tear. Once a tear is present in the retina, the liquid part of the vitreous can get through that hole and accumulate underneath the retina. And so the retina detaches from the wall of the eye. With time, more fluid makes its way under the retina and the detachment grows in size. Again, the result of vitreous traction. Before we finish, I want to take a minute and talk about warning symptoms. 1. Vitreous pulling on the retina often causes the retinal cells to fire creating what you see as a brief light flash occurring with eye movement. Two, when a retinal tear occurs, it often releases pigment or blood into the vitreous that you see as sudden appearance of new floaters. Three, if a retinal detachment occurs, then part of your vision goes missing. Should you experience any of these symptoms, you want to contact your ophthalmologist promptly. In summary, as time goes by, for all of us, vitreous changes cause several common problems, from benign to vision threatening. Typical floaters may be a nuisance, but of themselves, they don't cause any harm. However, they may be a warning symptom of something serious. Three common problems affect the macula in the back of the eye. Macular hole, from vertical pulling or traction. Retinal wrinkling, from horizontal pulling or macular hole from one-sided horizontal pulling. In the front of the eye, traction can cause a retinal tear slash detachment. All of these are relatively common problems in the eye world. How do you go about fixing them? In part three, we describe an eye surgery called vitrectomy, the main technique used to repair many intraocular problems, particularly the ones we talked about in this video. In a separate video, we cover the different methods of repairing retinal tear and detachment in detail. Here are further references if you want to read further.